Catholic parishes in the Archdiocese of Chicago are dramatically fewer. The reduction is part of a restructuring process which began four years ago called Renew My Church. Taking into account recent updates, the Archdiocese will have closed more than 120 parishes and decommissioned nearly 60 churches since 2018. And joining me now is Shannon Mullen, Editor-in-Chief of Catholic News Agency. Shannon, welcome back. Always so great to see you. Thank you. So what more can you tell us about this restructuring? As you said, it started in 2016, so it's been a slow and painful process for uh, the Catholics in the Archdiocese. I mean, I was talking with my managing editor before uh, earlier today, and when you think about Chicago, decades ago and these rich, vibrant, uh, local, ethnic parishes. And it really, you know, sadly, it has been decimated since then. Since 1975, I believe, there are fully half as many priests as there were nearly 50 years ago. So it gives you a, a kind of sen a sense of what the realities are, that they're trying to find efficiencies. Uh, a lot of these buildings are quite old and in need of repair. So there's a lot of considerations that uh, go into this kind of a plan. Yeah, and I can imagine it's very devastating for the faithful. Can you talk about the impact on them? Well, yeah, the, the devotion to some of these smaller parishes, uh, especially in uh, the city of Chicago and, and in the suburbs too, yes, in, a lot of these families go back generations to these particular parishes. So. It's going to be a very painful process to let go of that, even in cases where those churches will still be used, they'll, they'll have a new identity, they'll be uh, grouped with other parishes, they'll share a priest, they'll share a pastor. Uh, so it's, it's a, a hard thing to go through. Yeah, and do we know, and, and maybe we don't, but what will happen to those churches that are no longer, you know, going to have mass? Yeah, as you said, probably when the smoke clears, there's going to be about 60 churches, it sounds like, that will not be celebrating mass mm -hmm. anymore. R really sad. I mean, inevitably, where this has happened in other places, in in Pittsburgh, in, in Cincinnati, where this is happening, they, they are sold off. You know, eventually, this is very valuable real estate and uh, you know that's that's part of the plan it's very costly to maintain these uh, properties so. yeah changing times but still very very sad um, I want to switch gears a little bit as you know a, a number of places have kind of rolled bas back that is mask mandates um, also doing that in the Archdiocese of Chicago can you talk a little bit more about that Yes, well, the latest development in this uh, really stems from last week there was a state judge that declared the state's statewide school mass mandate uh, to be against state law. So uh, that ruling came out on Friday. Shortly after that, the Archdiocese of Chicago said, you know, regardless of the ruling, we're still going to mask, mm -hmm. uh, which was a surprising announcement for many. Uh, there was more recently a local principal at a K to eight school, Queen of uh, the Martyrs uh, Church, that said, "Hey, we're going to make mass uh, optional." Uh, there was some uh, disciplining of him, I think. But then shortly after that, and this is a fast-moving story. Uh, the, the the archdiocese said, "No, we're going to make uh, ma masking optional in." in much of the of the archdiocese not the city of chicago though yeah. so yeah. yeah and there was a lot of support from what i read um you know for the principal for doing that yeah i mean you know we're all tired of masks there's no doubt about it but parents it's a different situation there's a lot more urgency there they see the cumulative effect of of masking yeah. whether it's protected their child or, or not from COVID is another discussion but the social losses, the language losses, the developmental losses, uh, parents are starting to see that and they're really becoming alarmed at, at the outcome. Yeah, and it's continually evolving. I'm sure more and more we'll start to see uh, things evolving from that, kind of turning things forward to you. What are you all looking at uh, as far as CNA? What are you working on? Yes. Well, one story is uh, we had a story earlier in the week about a priest in uh, Phoenix who it was discovered that he had been for decades saying baptisms invalidly. 
he was using the word we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, instead of I. And that invalidates how many uh, baptisms we don't know. When I was reading that story myself, of course you think of, am I validly baptized? Right. And so we will have a story following up on that, kind of explaining uh, the do's and don'ts of, of that situation. It's really, it's really a, a mind bender. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. That does raise a lot of questions. Yes, I think there's going to be a lot of people digging through their old VCRs, uh, tapes, to make sure that the right words were used for their, for their baptisms and yeah. their children's baptisms. So. We'll be following that story as well. Shan, thank you so much for coming. I always appreciate it. Thank you.